Today we'll take a look at how to use a Microsoft Paint 3D in your artwork for developing Unity assets. Hey everyone, Kevin here. Today I want to show you how you can use Paint 3D to create 3D objects and also scenes. If you've never heard of it before, chances are you already have it. Paint 3D comes for free together with Windows 10. It's kind of like the program Blender, but it's a lot more simplistic. And simplicity isn't necessarily a bad thing. Anyone can sit down and you can start creating. In fact, I was able to create this 3D scene with these chocolate chip cookies sitting on the baking sheet. And yes, there is now Kevin Cookie Company official branded milk now available. Once you're done creating your 3D object, you can print out a 3D object, you can create a video of it, you can even bring it into Microsoft PowerPoint so you can add a little bit of 3D rotation between slides. I'm going to show you how you can do all of this step by step. By the end of this video, you'll know all of the fundamentals of using Paint 3D. Alright, well let's jump on the PC and let's start creating. Here I am now on my PC and to launch Paint 3D, head down to your taskbar and simply type in Paint 3D. You should see it appear as the best match. Let's click on that. This drops us into Paint 3D and by default we land on the welcome screen. Up here in the top left hand corner we can kick off our very own new project and in a moment we'll do this. Down below you can open up an existing project or you can open 2D or 3D files. There are some tutorial videos. You can also browse a 3D collection, but once again, we want to start creating, so let's go to the top left-hand corner and click on New. This drops us into a blank canvas in Paint 3D. Across the top, I have categories of all of these different tools, and throughout this tutorial, we're going to go through each one of these to see what they do. Each one of these different categories has some associated tools over in the pane on the right hand side. And once again, as we go through these different categories, you'll start to see what these different tools are and when you can use them. If you want to follow along in this tutorial today, feel free to do that. It's going to be step by step so you can also create the same scene. I'm going to create the scene that we saw in the introduction. I'm going to create a baking sheet with some cookies and then also the container of milk. So if you want to follow along, you'll be able to create that exact same scene. First, I want to start by creating my cookie and I want to use a reference picture of a cookie to help me create this 3D object. I'm going to move Paint 3D over to the side and here on my desktop, I have a basic picture of a cookie. It's just a JPEG and I'll drag it over into Paint 3D. You can find any photo of a cookie online and you can use that as a reference photo. The only reason I brought this in is I want to make sure I get some of the texturing and also the coloring as I build out my 3D cookie. Now that I have a reference photo in Paint 3D, I want to start creating a 3D shape or basically a 3D cookie. So if I look up here at all of these different controls, there's one called 3D shapes. Let's click on this one. When I click on 3D shapes, this opens up a pane over on the right hand side where I have all sorts of different shapes that I can use. There's a 3D library. I could also use 3D doodling. So here I could draw out my own 3D shape. And here I see some preset 3D objects that I can just insert. Down below there are also some 3D models and at the very bottom I can also set a color. Now I want to insert an object that looks like a cookie, but first I want to select a color that kind of looks like a chocolate chip cookie. Right down here I have an eyedropper. I'll click on that and then I'll take it over to my reference photo. And right here in the middle this brown is really like a chocolate chip cookie, so I'll select that one and here now you see the brown color is set. Now up above, once again, I have all these 3D objects and this one right here called Hemisphere, it looks kind of like a cookie. I'll click on this one and then go over to the canvas and now I can draw my shape. So here you can kind of see a cookie taking shape. Now if I drag down, you can see that it pulls the hemisphere down, but that doesn't really look like a cookie, so I'm not going to go that far down. I want it to be just about there. That looks like a nice cookie shape. Once I release the shape, you see all these different controls appear around it, and these allow me to rotate and adjust the shape in the 3D environment. So here, for example, if I click here, here I can adjust the X axis. I could also go to the bottom, and this allows me to adjust the Y axis, and here at the top I can adjust the Z axis. So this allows me to just rotate my objects in this 3D environment. Also, over on the left-hand side, 
Here I can adjust the Z axis position. So when I click on that, I could pull it forward or here I could push it back. There now it's behind the canvas. So I'll just pull it up and leave it here. Now, right up in the top right hand corner, let's say I make changes to one of these shapes and I didn't really mean to do that. I can go up to the top and I can click on history. And here I could go back to the very beginning if I go back to the beginning or I could just go back a little bit. Now I wanna go back right to here before I started moving the shape around. Now if I click down, I have my shape on the canvas. To start building my chocolate chip cookie, I wanna build it in a way where I can match it to this photo. So once again, I'll click on the cookie and here I'm gonna adjust the X rotation. And I'll adjust it to 90 degrees. So this is a top down view of my cookie. And here I'll pull it over to the side and I'll keep it right over here so I can see the photo of the cookie right alongside my 3D object. I want my cookie to look like this photo and to do that, I wanna paint on the cookie. Right up here where we have all of our tools, once again, these are the different tool categories. There's one called brushes. Let's click into this one. Once we click into brushes, this opens up a pane over on the right hand side with all of the different brush tools. First, I want the edges of my 3D cookie to match the photo. And you can see here on the cookie, the edges are a little bit darker than the center. Here the brown's just a tiny bit darker. Just like we did before for the color, I'll click over on this eyedropper and then I'll go over and I'll select this darker brown color. Here now you see I have this darker brown color selected. Now right up here, I have all of these different brush tools. I'm gonna to click on the spray can. When I select the spray can, here I can choose the size or the thickness. And right down here, I can also set the opacity. I'm gonna leave these set to the default. I think they're fine for now. Now I can go around my cookie and I can start darkening the edges. So here it's gonna look like this cookie that was cooked just the perfect amount of time. So I'll just kind of brush in this color as I go around. Also, if you notice the photo, there are some darker spots on the cookie. So here I'll just add a few nice little dark colors to my cookie. So here you see it starts to add a little bit more texturing. Also on the cookie itself, there are also some lighter spots on the cookie and I wanna make sure that my 3D cookie reflects that. Once again, I'll go down to the eyedropper and let me select this lighter shade right here. And then once again, also using the spray can here, I'll, I'll sprinkle in some of these lighter shades onto my cookie. So once again, this all kind of adds to that texture of the cookie. This is starting to look pretty good. As I'm painting my shape, one thing you'll notice is this icon appears on the bottom and this is the free rotation handle. If I click on this, I can once again, rotate my shape in any direction you'll see that the bottom is untouched. I haven't been painting that, but that's fine. This is gonna be sitting on a baking sheet, so it doesn't matter what the bottom looks like. For now, we'll just focus on the top of the cookie. I'm gonna undo this just so it gets back to the default orientation. So far, we have a nice sugar cookie, but we wanna make sure that there are some chocolate chips in this cookie. So once again, we need to add some more 3D shapes. Let's go up to the top bar and click on 3D shapes. Once again, this opens the 3D shapes pane and we have all of the different objects that we can insert. This time, I wanna use a 3D doodle. And there are a few different types of doodles that we can insert. Feel free to play around with these to see how they work. Now, I wanna insert a tube brush. So I'll select this first option. Right down here, I can choose the shape of the tube. And there are a whole bunch of different options, but I just wanna go with this first one, which is called the capsule. Right here, I can choose the thickness. I'm gonna leave it set to the 60 pixels. And right down here, I can choose the taper. So here you could have none. Here I could have it go from big to small. Here you could have it go from small to big. For chocolate chip, I want it to be big to small. If you've ever seen a chocolate chip, and we can even see right here in the picture, the base is a little bit bigger than the top. So I think this big to small will be perfect. Now right now I have my color set to the cookie color, and I don't want that color. I want it to match the color of this chocolate chip. So once again, let's go down to the color picker and I'll go over here and choose this nice, delicious looking chocolate brown. So now I have that color selected, I have my tool selected, and now I can draw my chocolate chip. To draw the chocolate chip, I'll simply click on the screen and then pull upwards, and then I'll release. So it's pretty quick and easy. I'll click on this check mark and I'm satisfied with that. Here you see this kind of looks like a chocolate chip. It has that bigger base and then it kind of gets smaller near the top. Now, just like with all 3D objects, once again, I have access to all of these different tools. So here I can rotate my chocolate chip. Now I wanna place the chocolate chip on this cookie. And you'll see that right now, this is the top-down view of the cookie. So I wanna make sure that my chocolate chip is also in the top-down view position. So here I'll press the shift key and this allows me to really get it to the precise degrees. So here you'll see by default, it was at 90 degrees, but here if I press shift, 
here I'll click on the rotation tool and then I'll rotate right until I hit 90 degrees. So that's gonna match the 90 degrees of the cookie. So here now I have my chocolate chip and I can pull it over onto my cookie. Now I'm not quite sure if it's on the cookie right now. To check the view, I can go up here to the top and click on the 3D view. Let's click on this to toggle to the 3D view. The chocolate chip looks like it's on there pretty nicely, but let's go back to the previous view. Right here, I can click on the Z axis position. So here I can move the chocolate chip back, so here it's behind the cookie, and here I could pull it forward so it just pops through the cookie. Now I want it to be really integrated into the cookie, so here I'll place it right about there so it's just popping out of the cookie. Now this wouldn't be a very good chocolate chip cookie if I only had one chocolate chip. So I'm gonna copy this, I'll simply click this object, press Control C, and then I can press Control V, and that gives me another chocolate chip. And here I can move this to a different position of my cookie. Now here it's sticking out a little bit more because remember the cookie goes down towards the edges. So here I'll adjust the position and let me move this back just a tiny bit. And here I can even adjust the rotation just a tiny bit just so it's popping out over there. Now I'm gonna go through and I'll copy and paste even more cookies so, or chocolate chips. So here I'll copy another one and let me move it right to about there and I'll do this a bunch of times so we have a bunch of chocolate on this cookie. I've now added a whole bunch of chocolate chips to my cookie, and as I was placing them, I would click on them and I'd rotate them a little bit, depending on which side of the cookie they were on. Here, it kind of tapers down towards the edge over here, so here I rotated it so it would point in the same direction. Now I have all of my chocolate chips on the cookie, but the coloring doesn't really look that good. If we look over at these chocolate chips, you'll notice there's a little bit of lighting hitting these chocolate chips, and I want something similar on mine. So once again, just like we did before, to add this different coloring to the cookie, let's go back over to brushes up on the top. And right over here, once again, we have all these different tools, and I'm gonna click on this one called watercolor. And I wanna apply this white lighting to all of my chocolate chips. So here I'll go down to the color picker, and let me choose this lighter shade right there. Now with the watercolor tool selected, here I can paint on, but right now by default, the thickness is a little bigger than I want it, so I'm gonna reduce this down so just a nice small little shape. And here now I can apply some coloring. So look at that, it looks like there's light hitting that chocolate chip right in that position. I'll go through and I'll color my different chocolate chips and feel free to do the same. All right, this chocolate chip cookie is starting to look pretty good to me. Next, I wanna create multiple chocolate chip cookies. So to select this whole cookie, let's go back up to the top and click on 3D shapes. Now that I'm on the 3D shapes view, I can highlight this cookie. So here I'll select the entire thing. Now right now, each individual item within this cookie is its own separate object. So all of these chocolate chips are an object and then the cookie itself is an object. I wanna group them all together and just treat it as one object. Now that I've selected this entire item, over on the right hand side, once I have this item selected, I can group all of these. So here I'll click on group and now here, if I click over here, it'll select the entire object and all of the chocolate chips. So here, if I rotate it, it'll simply rotate everything together. And that's exactly what I want. Here, I'll zoom out just a little bit. Here, I'll move my mouse wheel and that'll zoom me out of the scene a little bit. Now, once again, just like in the intro, I had three cookies on the baking sheet. So I wanna duplicate these cookies and it's pretty easy to do that. I don't have to recreate more cookies. Here, I'm gonna move this one a little bit over to the side. Here, once I have this object selected, I'll press Control C to copy, and then I can press Control V, and that'll paste it. So here now I have another chocolate chip cookie. And maybe here I'll just rotate it just a little bit. So the last thing you want is for everything to just look uniform and consistent. You want it to look a little bit different. So that rotation will help a little bit with that. Once again, I'll select this first object. I'll press Control C, Control V, and that pastes another chocolate chip cookie. And here I'll put that right over here. And here too, I'll just rotate it a little bit, just once again, so everything doesn't look so uniform. Now, if I wanted to, I could also move some of the chocolate chips around just to make them look a little different, but I think the rotation alone makes it look pretty good and they don't all look the same. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm now done working with the cookies and I no longer need this reference photo. Now I could highlight this photo and once that's selected, I can press the delete key on my keyboard and that'll wipe it out and I now have a blank canvas again. But I am mainly working in 3D and I don't need this canvas over on the side. So right up on top where I have all my, all my tools, I can click on canvas and right here I can decide to not show the canvas. So right now here I am just working in my 3D environment. Next, I wanna place these three cookies on a baking sheet. So once again, just like we did before, we wanna insert a 3D shape. Let's go back to the top and click on 3D shapes. 
Now over here, there are a whole bunch of different types of 3D objects, and the closest one to a baking sheet is a cube. A baking sheet's a rectangular object, and this is a cube, so let's start with this and see if we can get it down to looking like a baking sheet. Here I'll click on this object, and I'll simply drag it so it appears over the cookies. So the size is gonna be just a little bit bigger than the three cookies, and then I'll let go. Now one of the things you'll notice is it's a cube. So when I go around here, you'll notice that it's pretty thick in back. And I wanna reduce that. So right up here, I have these borders around the shape. And here I can drag down the depth of this shape. And here I wanna make it so it's just about flat. So I'll go right down to there. Now I can rotate it because I want this to appear behind my cookies. And I'll bring it up to 90 degrees and then I'll place it right here behind the cookies. Now one of the things you'll notice is the cookies are actually sitting through the cube, and I don't want that. I want this cube or the rectangular baking sheet to be just behind the cookies. So over here, I can choose the Z-axis position. So here, you'll see that I can move it behind the cookies, I can move it in front of the cookies, but I want the cookies to just be sitting on this sheet. So here, I'll pull it just about there, and it looks like the cookies are sitting on it exactly. To verify, I can go up to 3D view, and here I can see the cookies truly are sitting directly on it. Now that looks pretty good. Now right now I have a baking sheet, but it doesn't really look like a baking sheet. I wanna give it a texture that aligns with what a baking sheet typically looks like. Here I'm gonna pull my shape over, and next I wanna apply a sticker. Right up on top, there's an option called stickers. Let's click on that, and here we'll see all of these preset textures. But I can choose whatever texture I want. Right up here, I can click on this smiley face and we see different stickers I can insert. Or here if I click on this folder icon, I can add my own. I'm gonna add my own sticker. Here on my desktop, I have a top-down photo of a baking sheet. So this will give me the texture to apply to my baking sheet. Feel free to go online and search for just a photo of a baking sheet and then bring that in. Here I'll click on this, and now I've inserted this sticker. Now here you see the baking sheet is a lot smaller than the actual shape. So here I'm gonna bring it up to the top corner and then I'll expand it quite a bit so it fills up the entire cube area. Here I'll place it right about here so you see this nice color or texture from the baking sheet is now applied to my cube. That looks pretty good so I'll click on the check mark. Now that I have my baking sheet all set up, I can click on this object and here I'll pull it under my cookies. So now you have all of my cookies sitting on top of a baking sheet. And this is looking pretty good. Now that I have the baking sheet sitting behind the cookies, I'll highlight this entire object and let's select that. And here I'll go over and I'll group all of these together. So the baking sheet and the cookies will all be part of the same group. And here now I can rotate it and let me bring it so it sits down on the base. So here I'll bring it all the way down and here it's sitting on the floor. Here you see a little bit of color markation on the screen. This indicates that it's on the bottom. And here, even as you drag the item down, you'll notice that it lands on this surface right at about here. Now I could bring it even lower, but I'm gonna place it right here on the base. And this way, especially as I bring in the milk and other objects, I'll be able to align them all in the same plane here. Now right now, as I look at this image, it looks like the baking sheet's a little bit thick. Now right now, this is one group of objects. I could simply select this entire thing and here I could adjust how thick it appears. So I'm gonna adjust this. It'll make the cookies a little bit thinner, but I think that's fine. I think that looks good. And here I'll just adjust it a little bit more so the baking sheet's a little bit thinner. And here, once again, I'll pull this down so it sits right on the base. Next, I wanna insert a container of milk to appear alongside my cookies. For this one, instead of building it out, let's see what's available in the 3D library. Right up here, I'll click on 3D library and let's search for milk to see what shows up. Once I type in milk, here I see this half pint of milk. I'll click on this object and that'll bring it into my scene. Now it's inserted this object and I can now position it around. Here I'll jump into the 3D view so I could find a good position for it. Now if I wanna drop it down, here I could bring it down and here it's sitting on the base. So I'll bring it down to the base so it sits alongside the cookies and then here I can move it back just a little bit. So here you notice the plane moving back. I also wanna rotate the milk so it kinda of sits at an angle to the cookies. I think that looks pretty good. Here I could toggle between the 3D view and the 2D view and here I could see that they're all sitting on that same plane. Here I'll jump back to the 3D view. Now I did mention that we now have branded milk at the Kevin Cookie Company so I wanna insert my logo on this container of milk. To do this, just like we did with the baking sheet, we're gonna use stickers to pull this off. Right up here, I'll click on add sticker. 
I've now added a sticker for the Kevin Cookie Company, and you can see that right here. If you want to use this logo in your 3D scene that you're building out, I've included a link to it in the description of this video. Here I'll click on the sticker and it just throws it directly onto my baking sheet. Now I don't want the logo there, so I'll select this object and I'm going to move it over to the milk. Now one of the really cool things that you can see here, and let me zoom in a little bit just so you can see this a little better. As I move the logo around, you'll notice how it conforms to the shape that I'm putting it on. So that's pretty cool how it does that. So here I can put the logo up on top or I can put it down on the side of the milk. I'll adjust the sizing just a little bit so it appears here on the size of the milk, on the side of the milk. I think that's a pretty good position. I'll click on this check mark. Also, I want to put a logo on the other side of the milk. So let me click on the milk container and here I'm going to rotate it around. Now that I have the other side of the milk visible, I'll click on this sticker once again. Here I see it appear on my canvas and I'll drag it over. Here again, I'll adjust the size and let me position it right here. Now if I wanted to insert another logo, I could also click on this stamp tool. When I click on the stamp, that puts in another copy of the logo, and then I can position it wherever else I want. But I don't need another logo on here, so I'll simply remove that. Now that I have the logo in place, I want to rotate the milk again. Here I'll go back over to 3D Shapes. Let me select the milk container, and then I'll go ahead and let's rotate it again so it appears this way. So I think that's pretty good. Next, I want to insert the Kevin Cookie Company URL on the milk container. And to do that, we're going to use 2D Shapes. Right up on top, let's click on 2D Shapes, and first, I want to insert a container for the text. So over here, I could insert all these different shapes, and just like we could do with the sticker, here I could draw a shape on the milk container, and that's going to conform to the object that we're putting it on. Now, I don't want to insert a circle. Instead, I want to put this rounded square on the container, and I'll put it right here near the bottom. So I'm going to draw my shape right here, and keep in mind, this is where the URL will go. Now right up here I could select a fill. I'm going to click on this and let's go with this dark red that kind of matches the red on the milk container. I don't need a line around it, so here I'll click over here and select none. Now this looks pretty good. Let me move it right towards the bottom and I'll extend it just a little bit. So I'll have it use up the width of most of the milk carton. Now that position looks pretty good to me, so I'll click on OK. Next, I want to insert some text so it appears on this milk carton. Now I'm going to leave the 2D view for just a moment, and once again, let's click back onto Canvas, and let's click on Show Canvas. I've now turned the canvas back on, and I want the canvas to match my dark red that I have over here. Let's go over and click on Brushes. Let's go down to the Paint Bucket, and over here, I'll select the same dark red color. Over here now, I'll paste it on the canvas, so the canvas now matches this rounded square. Right up here, let's click on Text, and I want this to be white text, so I'll click on White. I'll leave the font set to Sago UI. I think that's fine. Right up here, you have two different types of text that you can insert. You could insert 2D text or 3D text. Now, I just want this to be 2D text. It's going to sit on this surface, but keep in mind, you can also insert 3D text. Here, I'll click on the canvas, and let's type in kevincookiecompany.com. I've inserted the text. I'm going to go and just align it and then expand it just a little bit so the full text appears on the canvas. I'm going to highlight this and just reduce the font size just a little bit so it fits in right there. I think that looks pretty good, so I'll click away and that now pastes the text on the canvas. Now one thing to keep in mind, once you paste text, it's locked in place. So I can't go back and select this text again. So if for whatever reason I'm unsatisfied with this text, I could either go back up to history and go back to a previous step or I could highlight this and then delete it and then start again. But unfortunately, you can't go back and edit text. Next, I'm going to highlight this text. So I'm going to add a rectangle around it. And once I have it selected, I'm going to make that a sticker. So let's click on Make Sticker. Right now, I have a sticker in place, and I could drag it over, and I could place this on the milk carton. Here, I'll adjust it, and let me reduce the size so it just fits into this rectangle. And I think it'll help if I zoom in just a little bit to make sure that I position it properly. Here I place it right in that area, and I think that looks pretty good, so I'll click on the check mark. Next, let's jump back to the 3D view, and now here you can see my milk carton with my text appearing on the carton. That looks pretty good. Now the scene is coming together pretty nicely, however, I want to center all of these different items in the middle of this 3D view. Here I'll zoom out just a little bit, and I'll select all of my different 3D objects. Right here now, I can move these so they appear right in the center near the canvas. That's a pretty good position. Next, I'm going to turn off the canvas again. I can go up here, click on Canvas, and then I'll turn off or toggle off Show Canvas. 
Once again, I could enter the 3D view, and this is looking pretty good. I have some pretty good looking cookies, I have my baking sheet, and I have my carton of milk. The scene is coming together very nicely now, and I think we're pretty much done building out the scene. However, I do want to show you a few different ways how you can visualize your scene. Right up on top, if we click on effects, you can apply different filters to your scene. Right now it's set to the default filter, but here I can apply different colors. So here's lavender, or I could apply tan. So you can see how it affects what your image looks like. I'm gonna go back to default. Down below you also have something called the light wheel. And here you can adjust how the light hits your 3D scene. So here you can have the lighting so it's more behind the scene. Here I could adjust it so here it's shining right at the milk. So this one looks pretty good. The cookies look pretty vibrant and the carton looks pretty good. So I'll stick with this positioning for the light. Now once I'm all done building out my scene and setting the lighting, I'm gonna go up to the top left hand corner and click on menu. Now within menu, I have a bunch of different options, but first off, I wanna save my project. So I could go down to save as. I have a few different options. I could save it as an image, a 3D model, a video, or a paint 3D project. If I wanna come back at some, let's say later point, and I wanna edit this project again, this will maintain its original format. So first, let's save it as a paint 3D project. Once you finish typing in a name for your project, click on save and paint 3D. Now that I've saved my project, I can once again come back and I can edit this scene whenever I want. Let's once again go up to menu and within menu go down to save as. Over here, once again, if I wanna bring this into, let's say Microsoft PowerPoint or some other application, I can save this as a 3D model. Let's also do that because I wanna show you how you can bring this into PowerPoint. This opens up a file prompt and here I could type in a file name. I'll simply call this the Kevin Cookie Company scene and then I'll save it here. Right down below, you have different formats that you could save it as. You have GLB, FBX, and 3MF. These are all different formats, so depending on where you want to bring this in, you can choose the appropriate format. Now, you could just save it as this standard format, and this will work in PowerPoint. Next, let's click on Save. We've now saved it in a format that will work in PowerPoint, as well as other applications. Once again, let's go up to Menu, and this time, once again, let's go to Save As, but let's click on Video. I want to show you how you could also export this as a video. When I click on video, here we see the video playing and we can choose what format we wanna save it as. So here I have an MP4 video selected. You can choose the size. Down below, you also have some additional video settings. You can choose the frame rate, the quality. I'll leave all of those set to the default. And down below, this is fun. You can also set the animation. Right now, this is set to a turntable, but here you could have it swing. You could also have it jump and turn, wobble, Emerge and also hover so you can apply all these different cool effects and then you can integrate these into other videos that you're pulling together So it's a neat way to incorporate some 3d into different videos Once you're all done selecting these different options click on save I mentioned earlier that you can also bring your 3d model into Microsoft PowerPoint and you can do some pretty cool stuff with 3d rotations here I have a deck for the Kevin Cookie Company, and right here I want to announce that we now offer the Kevin Cookie Company cookies together with milk, and I think a 3D image can really help with this. Right up on the top ribbon, let's click on Insert, and right over here there's the option to insert a 3D model. When we click on this, you have stock 3D models, or we could insert a 3D model from our device. Let's click on this device. This opens up the file picker and simply navigate to where you saved your 3D scene. I'll select mine and then click on insert. This has now inserted the 3D model onto my slide and by default it just puts it down with this cross section view. Now when I have this object selected up above on the ribbon I see an option for a 3D model and I have all these different controls for the 3D models. And this one right here is neat, it has different 3D model views. When I click on this here I can adjust the view. So maybe I want to go with this more top down view. Along with simply selecting 3D model views up here, I can also use this to adjust the rotation of my image. So here I could go with a nice top-down view and let me expand this a little bit. I want this to be a more prominent part of my slide. I think this position looks pretty nice. Now I want the next slide to have the same photo but I want it to focus more on the milk. So here I'll take this slide, I'll copy by pressing Control C and then I'll paste in the slide again. Once again, I'll go down and click on this image, and maybe I'm gonna have it rotate around here to really just focus on the milk. Along with rotating, I'll expand the size a little bit too, so here it really focuses on this milk container because that's our new product that we have now. Next, I'll highlight these two different slides, 
And if I go up to the top bar and click on transitions, here I can click on a morph transition. So let me jump into presentation mode and let's see what this looks like. I'm now in presentation mode and here you see my slide with this 3D image. If I click onto the next slide, you'll see the nice rotation and it focuses on the milk container. So check that out. You can really elevate your game with your PowerPoint presentations by bringing in some 3D imagery. And especially with the morph transition, it makes it possible to do these awesome 3D rotations.